Hello friends. In this video, we will be synthesizing butyric acid or butanoic acid from one butanol using chromic acid as the oxidizing agent. The primary alcohol 1 butanol is oxidized to its corresponding carboxylic acid butyric acid. Butyric acid has a very peculiar smell of vomitus and that is why we are making it. For this experiment you will need 32 grams of sodium dichromate, 27 milliliters of 98 percentage sulfuric acid, 15 milliliters of 1 butanol, for the purification and extraction part, we will need sodium bicarbonate, 50% sulfuric acid and ethyl acetate solvent. First, we will make the oxidizing agent. Take 32 grams of sodium dichromate and add 130 milliliters of distilled water to it. Using a glass rod, the solution was stirred to dissolve the compound in water. Sodium dichromate is highly soluble in water and it very easily dissolves in it. Next, the sodium dichromate solution was immersed in an ice water bath to chill down the temperature to less than 15 degrees Celsius. 27 milliliters of concentrated 98% sulfuric acid is added to the chilled solution with stirring. You can notice how the color of the solution changes from orange to red. Here the chromic acid is produced in situ. Next, a 500 ml round bottom flask was fixed on a stand over a hot plate stirrer. The previously made chromic acid solution was added to the round bottom flask using a funnel to prevent spilling. The flask was equipped with a two neck place and adapter. One of the necks were equipped with an addition funnel and on the other neck a dim growth condenser was attached. 15 ml of 1-butanol or N-butanol was added to the addition funnel. Make sure that the stopcock is closed before adding the alcohol. Slowly turn the knob of the stopcock and allow the alcohol to fall in the chromic acid solution drop by drop. Immediately upon contact with the chromic acid, the solution starts to darken as the oxidation has begun. Here, one butanol is oxidized by the chromic acid to butanoic acid or butyric acid, thereby the hexavalent chromium is reduced to its trivalent state, indicated by the change in color from orange to dark green. This method of oxidation is also known as sulfochromic oxidation method. The reaction is highly exothermic and without even applying an external heat, the solution starts to reflex. After some time, you will notice white fumes inside the Claisen adapter. For better visualization, I place my hand behind the Claisen adapter. The white fumes are of butyl butyrate, which is formed as a side product. The reaction mixture was reflexed for 2 hours. When the heat of the reaction ceases, external heat was applied. After 2 hours, we stop the reflex. The solution inside the flask have a deep green color due to the formation of the trivalent chromium. The compound formed is chromium sulfate. Now the flask was set up for distillation. I am using a distillation head from one of the side necks of the Claisen adapter and the other end is connected to a Frederick condenser. The distillate is collected vertically downward to the receiving flask. The water pump was turned on and water was circulated through the Frederick condenser. Heating and stirring was turned on and soon you'll see distillation commencing. Butyric acid forms an azeotrope with water, so it easily gets distilled over with water. The byproduct butyl butanoate also distills over to the receiving flask. The distillate is a bit cloudy due to the dissolved organic material in it. The distillation was continued until no more of the oily droplets pass over to the receiving flask.
Now the contents of the receiving flask was transferred to a separate refunnel. On the top, we see a small separate layer and that is the butyl butanoate tester. The bottom aqueous layer contains the butyric acid. The aqueous layer was collected in a beaker and the top butyl butanoate layer was washed again with distilled water and the water layer was discarded. The butyl butanoate was collected in a small test tube with some anhydrous sodium sulfate to dry it. Butyl butanoate has a very pleasant smell similar to pineapples. It was then stored in a small dram vial. Moving on with the synthesis of butyric acid. We will take the aqueous part of the distillate in a beaker. A quick pH test was done and the acidic pH was confirmed. Next, we will start adding sodium bicarbonate to the solution. Effervescence is seen as carbon dioxide is produced. What we are doing here is converting all the butyric acid to its sodium salt form, sodium butyrate. Sodium butyrate is soluble in water and is insoluble in the solvent called ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate is used to rinse the solution and extract out many side products and unreacted material from the solution. Finally, when no more effervescence is seen, pH was tested again and it was found to be alkaline. Now the contents of the beaker is boiled and the volume is reduced by around 100 milliliters. After allowing it to cool, the contents are poured into a separate refunnel. 10 milliliters of ethyl acetate was added and the flask was shaken with frequent venting to release the internal pressure. Then the lower aqueous layer was collected and the upper ethyl acetate layer was transferred to another beaker. The aqueous layer was then again transferred to the separatory funnel and extracted second time with ethyl acetate. A third extraction was also done and after three extractions the aqueous layer was collected and the ethyl acetate layer was discarded. A quick pH test was conducted to confirm the aqueous layer is alkaline. Now we will convert the sodium butyrate salt back to butyric acid. For that 50% solution of sulfuric acid is added to the beaker slowly. Immediately the stinky smell of vomitus comes into the environment. The smell is so natural that it would really make you nauseous. Keep adding the sulfuric acid until the solution is acidic, confirmed by the pH test. Now the butyric acid is almost in pure state with very less impurities in the aqueous phase. Now we will be extracting the butyric acid out of the aqueous phase. For that, we transfer the aqueous phase into a separate funnel and add 20 ml of ethyl acetate. Butyric acid is much more soluble in ethyl acetate than in aqueous layer. After the rinsing step, the bottom aqueous layer is collected in another beaker and the ethyl acetate layer in a conical flask. The extraction procedure is repeated around 10 times and all the ethyl acetate layer is collected and finally the aqueous layer is discarded. The conical flask containing the ethyl acetate layer is taken. We will remove water by adding anhydrous sodium sulfate. Initially on adding the sodium sulfate it sticks to the bottom of the flask as you can see here. This means that there is more water in the content and more sodium sulfate needs to be added. So more anhydrous sodium sulfate was added until we see free flowing of the salt in the bottom of the flask. This indicates that the solution is free from water. Now we fix a 300 ml round bottom flask and filter the solution to remove the sodium sulfate. Then the flask was set up for distillation just like before with a Frederick condenser in place. Cold water was circulated through the condenser and heating and stirring was turned on. Initially temperature rises and stays at around 77 degrees C. And this is the boiling point of ethyl acetate and everything that boils over and cools in the condenser are collected in the receiving flask. When the next mixture found it difficult to cross over to the condenser, some aluminium foil was used to insulate the Claisen adapter and the distillation head.
Next, the temperature spikes to around 150 degrees C and all that crosses over as the white fumes are collected in a separate flask. This is our desired product, butyric acid. Almost everything passed over and the distilling flask was almost empty. In the receiving flask, we have obtained some nice crystal clear flavor of vomitus. The issue is with the smell of the butyric acid. I can't clearly recognize the smell when I am closer to it, but when I move away from the lab space, the smell is getting intense and nauseating. So that's all in this video. Hope you have enjoyed the video. These are all my Patreon supporters who are financially helping me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links for both of them are given in the description. Once again, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button for notifications regarding my future videos. Thank you.